It's an hour before the open on Friday, September 3rd. Hello, traders. We just had the jobs report come out. There were 235,000 new jobs created. 720,000 new jobs were expected. So a very, very weak number. This comes on the heels of an ADP report that showed that there were many less jobs created in the private sector during the month of August than expected. 374,000 versus 660,000. No problem, right? The Fed's just going to keep printing money. That's what's keeping the market afloat currently. S&P futures on the news, they were up eight points. Now they're up six points. The market doesn't care that the economy is slowing down. We've also had really troubling news out of China this week. Their Caxon manufacturing PMI came in at 49.2. That is the first time that we've seen it in contraction territory in a very long time. This morning, their Caxon Services PMI came in at 46.7. That is deeply into contraction territory, and that's down from 54.9. Anything below 50 is in contraction territory. I think that China is the canary in the coal mine. Everything starts with China. They've had a 10-month head start on everyone else as far as the recovery from COVID. They have been the global growth engine for the last two decades. If the world's economy were starting to rebound, we would first see it in China. We're not seeing that at all. In fact, their market is in bear market territory. We also have the Chinese government putting additional pressure on large tech firms. We have inflation rising. I think these are all very, very stiff headwinds for the market. So let's take a look at the overall market and we can start to see that the character of the market is starting to change. Let's zoom out first. Please be patient. You know I'm gonna show you a couple of good stocks to trade. You can see that every time the market has had a dip, and it's recovered to a new high, we start getting these tiny little bodied candles. And that's where we can expect a sell-off. Big drop. Here we go. Tiny little candles in here. Boom. We sell off. Nice rebound. New relative high. Start getting into these tiny candles. This is a good example right in here. You get the drop. Then we start just floating higher on very light volume. And then the bottom falls out. I think we're getting ready to have one of those very sharp swift pullbacks. You can also see if we go into a weekly chart that we're riding the upper end of a long-term uptrend right in here. As we start to break out, that's where we start to see buying climaxes and then selling pressure on the back side. Another interesting fact is that in the last 25 years, only three times have we seen monthly gains on the S&P 500 that have been seven consecutive higher months. This is the fourth time August finished positive. So now four times in the last 25 years has the market been able to rally for seven consecutive months. It's never rallied eight consecutive months in a row. That tells me that the likelihood of September finishing higher is pretty dang low. Now I want to zoom in and show you that we can see signs of two-sided price action, of selling pressure. Here you can see yesterday we had this nice gap up and then the market tried to get through that high. This is what I consider to be a key bar. This is a bearish hammer off of the high and then followed immediately by a long red candle. This was a warning sign. Market tries to even get back to that level and you start seeing tails above body. No, nope, can't do it. That is a sign that sellers are more aggressive. Get an upward sloping trend line here and a bearish 10P cross right in here. See you later. But it was not just yesterday. Look what else we're seeing. And mind you, this selling lasted late in the day. That is a warning sign. Okay, so let's go back one more day to Wednesday. Ah, nice gap up. Here we go. Break out to a new high. Everything looks beautiful. Nice and orderly. Upward sloping trend line. Bearish 10P cross right in here. Tells you we need to be careful. There's your upward sloping trend line. Look at that selling late in the day. 
warning sign. Ah, here we go. Let's go back one more day. This is Tuesday. Market sells off on the open, but nice bounce. Get a double top lower high, and then all of a sudden, there's your upward sloping trend line. Bearish cross right in here. Got the market selling off. Selling late in the day. Late day selling is not a good sign for the market. I believe that we are going to see a pullback in here, and that's why I'm urging longer term swing traders with a three to four week time horizon to stay sidelined. Wait for that pullback to the 50 day moving average. That will be your opportunity to start considering long position long positions, excuse me. Why did we get to the 50 day moving average? We've got to evaluate the news that's coming out. If there is any type of credit concern, if the economic slowdown really starts to accelerate in China and in the U.S., that's a problem. We're going to eventually see a sell-off down to that 50-day moving average. You'll see a nice little bounce that peters out before it can get back up to the high. And then the second shoe drops and we have a more substantial decline. So I think that you can buy here if you're nimble. And then when we get about halfway up, you've got to be very, very careful because we want to make sure that we have enough gas in the tank to get back up to the high. One of these times, we're going to see follow through selling and a breakdown. Let's put that longer term trend line up for the S&P 500. And you can see how it's almost mirroring that 50-day moving average. Let's go into the 100-day as well. There you can see a more substantial support level with horizontal support coming in to play there. The 200 day moving average, excuse me, click the wrong one, is way down here. So that would be a substantial pullback, but yes, lots of support there. I don't think we get to the 200 day. I think the 100 day, yes, there's a chance that we could see that sometime in September. This is a seasonally weak market. Why did I just spend so much dang time on the market because I'm going to show you some bullish opportunities that look good for day trading or very, very short term overnight swing trading. Just overnight. I'm not talking about hanging on to these for a week or more. You've got to be in cash if you are a long only trader. You've got to wait for that dip. I feel that this is a low probability market. I feel the risk is elevated for a market pullback. We do not buy puts up here because we have a gut feeling that the market's going to pull back. No, we don't trade gut feelings. Shorting this market, anybody that's tried to do that has been carried out in a body bag. This is a very, very, very strong market. You do not try to pick tops in a market like this. But you can always set significant trend lines and alerts so that you know when those key technical areas have been breached. That particular alert would not work because that trend line has already been violated. But in any event, draw those trend lines and that way you'll know when the market has technically broken down, fine, then we can start to short. Know that every single one of these dips has been so brief. Why? Because you can't make any money in bonds. Bond yields do not keep pace with inflation. And with central banks printing money like mad, investors are forced out on the risk curve. They're forced to own equities because they have negative real returns in fixed income. And that's what's fueling the rally right now. Forward PE on the S&P 500 is 21. It has not been that high since the tech bubble, year 2000. We all know what happened then. It's a time to be very, very careful. So we don't want to prematurely short the market. We want to wait for that technical confirmation. We want to wait for those breakdowns. We don't want to see a one, two day little pullback and then zoom right back higher. We need to see some sustained selling and late day closes that are on the low of the day and key technical support levels breached. 
once we see that, especially in a strong market like this, we're going to get some pretty big bounces. So those snapback rallies will be violent when they fail and we keep rolling over and making lower highs. Then we can be confident that the market is in longer term trouble and that there may be a trend change. But until then, we've got to trade with the wind at our back. We have to take advantage of this very strong market. Market first, market first, market first. Always get your market bearings. So we know that the market has been strong. We know that we've got tiny bodied candles up here. We know that the daily ranges are going to be tight. We have a holiday coming up. Usually the volume drops off. Tuesday is probably going to be a light day. We have a fairly light news cycle because the economic news will be behind us. Earnings season is behind us. We don't have a Fed meeting for a while. And we know that we can expect two-sided trading meaning that, yes, there's going to be an upward bias, but we're also going to see some nice sustained selling and some profit taking. Be cautious. Let's take a look. Going to go right into my pop bull search. Let's see what we've got. Love this. Big time compression right in here. Massive volume after that earnings announcement after the close. Stock closes on its high. If this were just a blow off, rally a head fake then you would have seen gradual profit taking throughout the course of the day and that candle would have finished somewhere in the middle it didn't it closed right on its high of the day that is strong buying let's put the spy overlay up this is what the market did boom 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 down 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 what the stock do during this massive sell-off that is a sign that buyers want more stock. A-S-A-N. Watch it. This stock is likely to go higher. You particularly want to watch it if we do get a market sell-off today. If the stock is able to maintain its relative strength, that will tell you that as soon as the market finds support, it will go higher. That's what we trade, relative strength. It is a huge edge for us. Very nice pullback through horizontal resistance. Massive volume in here. This stock wants to go LAC. Only going to take a look at these daily charts, downward sloping trend line, breach to the upside, get a nice little bullish flag in here, draw your trend line there, broken to the upside, closes on its high yesterday, gap higher, big volume. Stock will hit some resistance in here, so I'd be a little bit cautious with this one, but I do like that chart. SPOT, I'm not as, as big a fan of buying stocks that have been selling off hard and are bouncing. Even though it is through the 50, even though it is through the 100, I would be less interested in SPOT than a stock like UPST, which is surging higher. Nice upward sloping trend line here, continuing to grind higher, big volume. You will see that the volume is starting to wane a little bit, but this stock is strong on a pullback to that upward sloping trend line. I believe that is a nice one to buy. Here's a nice pattern. You can see it a very, very nice earnings rally. And then there's the profit taking that I had referenced before. When you get a big run like this, typically you're going to have a pullback for the next few days. Stock finds the 200-day moving average. It tests the horizontal breakout. And now we are back off to the races, breaking through horizontal resistance on heavy volume. Letter U, really like this pattern. This is one that you'll want to watch today. That's your key point. That's the previous high. That was resistance. It's also the halfway point of this long green candle. You want to see that preserved if you are a buyer. And so if we get any kind of pullback, that'd probably be a decent entry point. Your stop is that upward sloping trend line or the open from that long green bar. Big volume. Love it. Really looks good. Letter U was the stock. Beautiful. Look at that strength right here. Got a bullish flag formation. There's your downward sloping trend line. Breach to the upside. New relative high. KR also wants to go. Really strong. Love it. Letter A, I can't touch this. I'm sorry. This is just, this train has left the station. Very, very strong. Volume starting to come in. 
it wants to go higher, you get any kind of meaningful pullback in this one, I think it's going to set you up with a good opportunity to buy it. So when I see a chart like that, of course, I'm going to want to draw a trend line. If it pulls back to this level where that earnings announcement came out and we get a market pullback, yeah, I'd be interested in owning it there. So I'll set that alert there. CVS, kind of choppy, not my favorite. You can see it's back and forth. It is through a horizontal resistance level, really nice volume. So yes, it's okay. This one should have nice relative strength. J&J, &J, you've got a horizontal breakout right here. It's finding support right there. Not a lot of momentum in it. When I get a stock that makes a new relative high like this, I want to see it stay within striking distance. So the closer it can stay, the more it tells me that everybody is still in buy, 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 buy mode. When it gets a pullback like this, it tells me that there are some natural sellers and that stock is probably going to continue to be very choppy. Now on J&J, &J, you can see the 50-day moving average in here. And you can see that horizontal was resistance, breakout, now support, testing that support level. If you're looking to take a trade in J&J, &J, selling the 170 bullish put spread for a credit, that looks like a really decent trade. I believe that support level is going to hold. Plus you have COVID starting to increase and in the talk of booster shots. So J&J &J will be in the mix on that one. So we know that it has had the ability to move higher. So yes, J&J &J looks good, but I distance myself from the action on that. Quick recap, very easy to find these, by the way. I just used one search, Pop Bull. So in five minutes after the close each day, you could go through this list and you could set up your trading day, find the stocks that you really like. A-S-A-N, watch this stock. Really, really strong yesterday. LAC looks good for day trading. Got to be quick on that one. UPST, a strong one. Any pullback, very nice momentum. It's a wild one. I like the letter U. This looks really good to me. I also liked KR. So those are the stocks you want to watch. ASAN, letter U, KR, UPST also, but it's a volatile one. So be careful on that one. Know that the market is... I'm not going to say that it's in trouble because we don't have a technical breakdown. Although the S&P futures are currently down a point. So we've come off nine points on that unemployment number, much weaker than expected. These tiny bodied candles in here are a warning sign. Any of these stocks that I've mentioned, you've got to day trade or very short term overnight trade. I feel that there is a chance for the market to start coming in here in the next week or two so be super careful with your longs if you're a longer term swing trader do not short this market your best play is going to be to patiently wait on the sidelines wait for one of those nasty dips that we get like this and then start to take some longer term swing trades with a three or four week time horizon very important to understand the current characteristics of the market that's the context that i constantly keep referring to the market drives all of our other trading decisions you get the market right then you start to zero in on the best stocks and the best stocks will have technical breakouts on heavy volume technical breakout heavy volume and relative strength so instead of trading the s p 500 we wait for signs that the S&P 500 is going to turn, like 1OP indicator right here gives us a bullish cross. Stocks like that, like that, like that, like that. You want to be buying when we get that bullish cross. And that gives us additional cushion because if we're wrong here and the market continues to decline, these stocks have relative strength. They'll give us an opportunity to evaluate the market, exit the trade, probably at a scratch, maybe even make money on the trade because they're so dang strong. And we can exit that trade. That's the cushion we have versus S&P 500. I buy the S&P 500 in here and it continues to go down. I'm going to lose money. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.
Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.